Did Jesus come to do away with religion? It's a big question uh, facing, facing Christianity today. Uh, there's a lot of wrangling between Christians, between those who profess to follow Jesus and those who profess to follow the church that say that religion and Jesus are the same. Um, that by some chance, you know, that religion and Jesus are the same. This is totally not true. <clears throat> People who say that religion and Jesus are the same always go back to the place where Jesus said, um, the law, I did not come to abolish the law, but I came to fulfill it, that not one jot or tittle of the law will pass away until heaven and earth have passed away. And all these scriptures are true. Of course, Jesus said it. But, you have to understand what he meant. Okay? And pastors do this all the time. They'll say, this scripture says this, but you have to understand what it means. We're going to explain to you what it means. We're going to explain to you what God was thinking. We know that God's ways are not our ways. We know that his ways are high above our ways. Okay? The law was written, the law and you know everything that pertained to the law was written because the people of that time did not have the Holy Spirit. The sacrifice had not been made yet. They had to sacrifice the blood of bulls and the blood of lambs to cleanse their sins. They carried those sins and even after they died, you know, when they made the sacrifice, even after they died, they didn't go to heaven. They went to the bosom of Abraham. Abraham's faith uh, was to such a degree that he offered up his own child, that God tested him and said, place your child upon this altar and sacrifice him. This was a uh, prelude to what Jesus was going to do for the world because Abraham didn't have to give his son. Uh, God stopped him before he did it, but it was that faith that he was willing to give up his, on, his only son. He was willing to give up that son for God. It was his love for God that, that won over God's heart. And from that day forward, uh, the promise to Abraham was upheld. God never goes back on his promises. And God had made a covenant with Abraham to offer salvation to all the children of Abraham and you will be the father of many nations that your your lineage will be like the sands of the sea you know there's a lot of people that that were actually descendants of Abraham in blood okay so the law was written so that those those descendants could have a could live a life that was going to be obedient to God well they actually could not do it so what happened they went into slavery they were, under, they were slaves. They went um, into the bondage in Egypt because they couldn't be obedient to God. They were in bondage. <clears throat> they were not only in bondage physically, but they were in bondage spiritually. And so God chose Moses, who was, uh, who was a Jew, but was actually, um, you know, had become a Pharisee, or had become a uh, um, <clears throat> Pharaoh, Pharaoh's son, and he chose... Uh, Moses to lead them out of um, Egypt and into the promised land. But even, even in the midst of, of him leading them, and he had done great signs and wonders to lead them, he was up on the mountain for not even, what, maybe a few days? It, it may have been a week or so, you know, longer. But they were already making graven images, golden calves, golden, you know, things to worship, things to look with their eyes. They need to, they need to have some kind of connection with their eyes and outward, looking at the outward. Well, that's why they needed the law. They needed an outward something to look at that would give them something to live by because they didn't have the inward. They didn't have the Holy Spirit. They did not have the Spirit. They were led by the Spirit, but the Spirit was on the outside. The Spirit was on the outside. It wasn't on the inside. There wasn't that intimate connection with the Holy Spirit. So the law was needed. And all the generations of, of the Hebrews, the Jews, were under the law. Because that was God's chosen people to be under the law because the world did not know him. The world could not follow him. They did not know him. They, they could not make a connection with him. Okay? So, they were under the law. Jesus said, I come to fulfill the law. Not to abolish it, but to fulfill it. To write the law on your hearts. So that you can have an inside connection with the Holy Spirit. That the Holy Spirit will come alive in you. And that living water will flow from you. That the laws are written on your heart. That they will change who you are. You will be, you will be a church. You are the church. You are the temple. 
I will come and live in your heart. My Father and I will come and live in you if you follow me. Now, today, churches call the church buildings the house of God. They say, uh, oh, this is the house of God. And when, when people want to um, talk about how they uh, validate this, they go back to the Old Testament. Or they'll go to the, to the scriptures and say, well, um, Timothy, in 1 Timothy, talks about, you know, in the house of God. Well, that's because it was the gathering place of the churches. But it was the gathering of churches. That's also in scripture. There's many scriptures that lead you to know the truth. But you have to have, you have to have the eyes of the spirit. You have to be as cunning as a snake and harmless as a dove. Because God is not going to have blind followers. He wants true men and women of God. He wants leaders. He wants those who are are not going to look to men or look to anything on this earth to lead them, but are going to look to the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Word of God to guide their lives. And it is those people that He chooses to be His people. Now, there's a great deception in the churches. And I'm not going to start uh, wrangling and pointing fingers about how the churches are wrong. But I do want you just to think about what I have said about that the law before Jesus came was written down on paper, was written down on, so that these eyes could see. But Jesus says that I will die. I will make the sacrifice. I will give my life so that the Holy Spirit can come. Because if I don't go, if I don't go to my Father, if I don't do this, if I don't, if I don't walk in complete obedience, and He was made perfect. Yes, He was. God made Him that way. God did that for us. He sent His Son. He sent the Word of God that had been with Him always from the very beginning. And the Word was and is and always will be. And nothing came into existence that, was not, that did not go through the Word. The spoken Word of God the Father. The Word that proceeded from His mouth. And man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. We have to hear the Word of God in our spirit. We have to feel... We have to have that connection to the Holy Spirit. And Jesus paid the price for that grace. Even though we're not worthy. Even though we are unrighteous. And that no, not one was good, Isaiah said. But you know what? That was before Jesus. No, not one was good. We're not worthy, but He makes us worthy. Do not blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Do not think that you can live by these eyes or that you can live by the bread that we eat at the table alone. Live by every piece of bread that flows from heaven, the bread that came down from heaven. Eat of, his, eat of His body and His blood and the spirit, the spiritual. And every time you sit down to the table to bite of that bread and drink of that wine or drink of whatever you drink, do it in remembrance of Him. The sacrifice that was made for us that we could find grace. That even in our immorality and our sinfulness, that we can find that grace and that we can become slaves of God. And that if you do, know that you must be a sacrifice of holiness. It's no longer your life. If you want to claim Jesus, if you want to claim you're a Christian, then you better make sure that Jesus is ready to claim you. Because it's not about those who know Jesus. Don't listen to these people say, oh, do you know Jesus? You know who knows Jesus? Pretty much everybody in the, in the other world. Not in this world, but everybody in the world of the angels. Because the demons even knew him. When he, when he came up, the demons were like, oh, oh, son of God, don't do this. Oh, Messiah, please don't cast us out. They knew Jesus. The devil knows Jesus. Because he's the word of God. He is God. Don't you know that even the demons know Jesus? Don't think about knowing Jesus. Think about living a life that makes the Lord look down and the Father look down and the word of God knows you. Go forth, my brothers and sisters. The time of the awakening is here, and the end is close. We must stand up together and go forth and spread the true word of God, the true Holy Spirit. And may he guide you and lead you. And may Jesus bless you.